uh, today is the day that I finally get to share all my very exciting news with you. Uh, some of you that might follow me on Instagram or maybe follow Taylor and Jürgen on Instagram might have seen uh, the news already. So, spoiler to those guys who might have already seen it. Uh, if you want to keep up with me on Instagram, uh, I'll pop the link to my uh, Instagram account below. Uh, so yeah, news. Very, very exciting news. Um, whilst all the really horrible stuff was going on at the end of 2018 last year, uh, I was fortunate enough to get uh, contacted by quite a lot of people actually who saw uh, what I was able to build uh, in Taylor and & Jürgen and said, hey, do you want to do it again? Just bigger and better. And uh, I met with a lot of people and the really lovely thing was that uh, there was one group that kind of stood out more than others. Um, people who, oh, there's a truck, so might just wait until that one drives away so it's not so loud. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's going to be easier if I move inside because it's actually quite cold today. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm actually walking into my new work right now. Ba -ba -da -ba. Descending into the basement. So here I am. So the people who got in contact with me was uh, the group from Ockenbockety and specifically Avon uh, and Espen. I've actually been making Avon coffee for the whole time I've lived in Oslo actually and I never really thought that we would end up working together. Uh, so before I tell you a little bit more about the story maybe you should meet the gang! word out on my Instagram uh, to see if there were any questions that you guys had. So the first question from Viljar Grutla and he asks uh, why did I choose the Loring? I think that's a really really good question. Actually um, we made this decision a very long time ago that we wanted to buy this uh, piece of machinery from this American company in my opinion, uh, I feel like it is the most technologically advanced coffee roaster on the market right now. Uh, and a couple of years ago, when we were deciding which machine we wanted to buy, we actually did some pretty extensive testing. Uh, and we found out that the Diedrich and the Loring produced coffee of a very similar taste. But the technical capabilities of the Loring was just like far outstripped what Diedrich was capable of. So I knew that I could roast really great coffee on the Diedrich and we were kind of forced into a corner to buy that machine because of uh, financial limitations. Uh, but now I have some pretty solid financial backing behind me and uh, finally I'm able to afford my dream coffee roaster. Uh, I think my favorite feature on the Loring would have to be the fact that you can set it to idle uh, and it'll keep the right temperature so you can go and have lunch. Uh, and anybody that has ever stood by a coffee roaster for like 16 to 20 hours kind of tethered to the machine in the middle of a roast day, they'll absolutely understand why I love this feature. All right, next question. Please forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name slightly wrong. My Norwegian's still pretty shit. Gerd Vorden. Uh, what am I working on now? Uh, specifically, what I'm working on with Orpenbockety is that we're starting a new company. Uh, 
I'm gonna be the CEO, so the big boss lady. We're both part owners of this company. Uh, the company's name has to remain a little bit of a secret until next week when we start working on uh, the designs. Um, but what it is gonna be is a coffee roastery. We're gonna be roasting uh, coffee for all of the Oppenbuckety stores in Oslo. Uh, and it's also gonna be a donut production facility with, uh, you know, actually a specifically built kitchen for that purpose uh, with all the bells and whistles, basically my dream kitchen. Ultimately, I'm building the same thing that I built before, but it's gonna be so much better uh, because it's gonna, I know all the mistakes that I made before and I know what I need to do better. Uh, it's also gonna be in this really beautiful, specially made facility with tons of room, tons of light. We can do everything in the same room. Everyone can work together. It's all gonna be very nice and very cozy. Okay, so the next question that we have is from Magnus Solhaug. Uh, and his question, how does it feel to be the hero that Oslo needs, but not the one that it deserves? Uh, I don't feel like I'm a hero, honestly. I feel like uh, I'm just trying to make a good life for myself here in Oslo. Uh, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm married a Norwegian, so I feel like I'm kind of stuck here now. I don't have too much of a choice. Uh, so my main driver in building something beautiful, building something good that makes people happy, is that I just wanted to make Oslo into a bit more of the kind of city that I want to live in and the kind of city that I want to stay in. And you know, that means making people happy, making delicious things, and taking it easy. Okay, the user Pretty Good Yellow asked me the question, how do you brew coffee at home? I actually went out and got my husband a Wilfer Precision Svart for his birthday, uh, like six months after we met. Uh, that way it takes the guesswork out of making good coffee. And it means that I can leave the coffee making up to my husband. Uh, and you know, it's always gonna be delicious. Okay, and the last question for now is um, actually a little bit of a tough one. Um, is Chadoba, sorry about the pronunciation mate, um, asked the question, um, what happened between me and Jürgen? Uh, it is a great question uh, because we were very, very, very close. Um, and you know, um, when you put uh, any relationship under the kind of strain uh, that he and I were under, I think sometimes even the best relationships would falter. Um, and honestly, I don't think that I'm really, um, I don't think I'm really able to answer that question, unfortunately. Um, legally and personally, um, all I know is that um, he was the person in the world that I was closest to other than my husband, um, even more than my family. Um, we kind of were like brother and sister. Um, and yeah, losing, um, losing that relationship was actually probably sadder than losing the business, really. Um, yeah, just pretty sad stuff. And um, I don't know if there's ever gonna be a time where I'm able to talk about it, honestly, um, without bursting into tears, so. Yeah. I had a couple more uh, questions on Instagram last night, so I thought that I might answer them. My mate Troy, hey Troy, what's up? Uh, asked if I could be any donut flavor, what flavor would I be? Uh, and I think, I think I would be a savory donut. Like, if you sliced a donut in half and had like, bacon and egg and cheese inside, I think that's what I would be. I wouldn't be a sweet flavor, I'd definitely be a savory flavor. And the next question comes from Chris DeFerio from Keys to the Shop. 
thank you very much for asking this question. Uh, if you ever haven't listened to Chris's podcast, you absolutely should. I think that it's one of the best podcasts in the coffee industry. Um, his question was, what does your creative process look like? Um, or how do you get into the creative zone? Um, I feel like I don't have very much control over my creative process. I feel like I just get kind of like stung by the creative bug and I feel like I have to go and create something. Um, usually it's between the hours of like 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is like the times when my brain is most active. So the, the problem with that is like working in the coffee industry is that you have to wake up super early in the morning. <laughs> but I've always been such like a, a night owl. So I need to find some way of uh, making my like sleep patterns and creativity cycle like good for the industry that I work in. I don't know, it's tricky. <laughs> Someone named uh, Jared asked, uh, what is my roasting philosophy? Uh, and I'm really glad that I actually get to share this with you because I think I have some beliefs that aren't particularly common. So uh, my goal has always been when in roasting in businesses that I own is that I wanna be able to connect producers that are producing any type of coffee um, with consumers that like to drink that type of coffee. For example, you know, you have a producer who maybe doesn't have the capacity to, produ to be producing uh, 86 point coffees. Maybe they can only produce 82s. Uh, I want to be able to connect those people, uh, those producers, with the people who like to drink um, coffees that are a little bit more roasted, a little bit more developed, um, coffees that showcase like more heavy chocolatey characteristics and are uh, roasted to enhance those characteristics. You know, maybe then uh, like a, a very elegant um, and softly spoken and, and, and acidic, um, very refined coffee. Uh, I think that. The specialty coffee industry is really uh, kicking ourselves in the teeth by not taking advantage of people's preferences and and people's um, subjectivities that they already have. I think that if we are able to um, appeal to a broad range of people rather than a niche market that is the specialty market, I just think that not only can we actually have a real impact um, on the value chain, um, but then we can also be appealing to a much broader market of consumers that maybe are slightly outside of specialty. Uh, and that's kind of my goal with this uh, new project is that I want to work with varying degrees of quality of coffee um, and not only look at this tiny little niche uh, section of market uh, that's kind of like between 85 and 90. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to finding what I discover there and being able to actually make a little bit of a difference. The last question that I have is, are you going back to the vivid, colorful hairstyle? And you know what's really interesting is that uh, I still don't recognize myself with this kind of hair, honestly. It's the first time in my adult life that I've had my natural hair color and I still look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, who the hell is that? Um, I've had colored hair my whole life. Um, <laughs> And I feel like this is adventurous for me because it feels so alien. Um, the reason why I grew out my colored hair before was because I was working so much that uh, I just didn't have the time to be able to sit in a salon and get my hair done. Um, and so I just cut off all the color and just let it grow out. This is like all that time. Uh, yeah, so maybe I will because I'm kind of getting bored. My hairdresser said to me, she's like, just, just you wait. You're, uh, you're definitely gonna, <laughs> you're definitely gonna get bored of your hair this way. And I bet, I bet you're gonna come back in in six months and be like, all right, bleach my whole hair. But uh, maybe you can comment below, which has been your favorite one of my hair colors? Uh, and if I'm gonna color my hair again, what color should it be? Yeah, let me know. Taste, does it taste like success? <laughs>